as some of you may have received, uh, an amendment to the special events policy that the city manager promulgated just since the last city council meeting because he was uh, listening and he heard that there may in fact be uh, circumstances when the fees that are established could be uh, a hardship. Events are great. They add a element of, uh, of uh, panache to the city. We're here to be charged with protecting the interests, the convenience, the comforts of all the citizens. And while events are great, they have to be expected to help offset some of the costs. On the special events policy, while I appreciate Mr. Kennedy adding in a hardship provision, it does a couple of things. It identifies three individuals to hear the hardship. Three individuals are Mr. Kennedy himself, Mr. Braun, and Kelly for finance, so very capable staff. The problem that I have is twofold. One, it is not transparent to you, the residents, or to you know other vendors, others around. So, so what is more important for the policy, as far as the event policy, is that it is open and transparent. So with that being said, I'd move to direct the city manager to update the special events policy to, uh, for the exception, um, to be uh, reviewed and performed by city council consider with uh, consistent with council rule 32 uh, for the application of in-kind support uh, rule 32 reads that city support for an event may include but is not limited to waiver of city fees correct the, the motion is to update the policy to, so that the waiver is heard at and decided by council. If we do the right thing and we send these fees and make them reasonable, we won't have this problem. Yes. Yes. I know, two weeks ago, one of the main justifications for these fees was to recoup some of the cost of staff and special events. So now we're adding a whole other layer of staff time when every single event is going to apply for a hardship. So I think it's a band-aid approach. I think it is certainly fraught with the opportunities to show favoritism, if not punishment. Um, I don't know that the chamber, for example, will ever get a fair shake under this particular committee approach. Um, I, the better way is to simply rescind the fees. But if that's not going to happen, I'm still hopeful it will, then I agree. It needs to go before council so that it is open, transparent. I would ask the question, what costs are there to recoup if there are no events being held here? Apparently, um, there actually was quite an extensive study done looking at communities, and both uh, Councilmember Gross and Vice Mayor Sattel have referenced that several times, but what, what they're not telling you is what that study showed is that these other communities charge nothing or very small fees. So that's great that we did the study, but we incorporated none of it in our fee structure. Again, one of the major justifications for these fees was staff time. Well, I wonder how much staff time was spent running the 4th of July and the Christmas and Loveland events, events that historically were run by Chamber of Commerce. Um, Mary used the word ironic. What I find very ironic is both uh, at this meeting and last, including in, in the mayor's letter, both he and Councilmember Gross talked about being the steward of the city's resources, the protectors of the taxpayers. I find that very ironic and hypocritical when I think we blew $20,000 on two events that we ran purely out of spite rather than letting the chamber run those events. Uh, the 4th of July event that the organization that formerly ran it was going to run it out of town, march a parade up, up Loveland Avenue out to Sims Township. So uh, I, I think uh, we should all be uh, proud that uh, none of us were council members that led the first parade out of town. Uh, four let, let, let me, uh, let, let's wrap, let's. Uh, continue. 
there is a, a amount that cannot be placed in dollars on that. And we need to stop being bullies, recognize that, recognize we made a mistake, rescind these fees, study it again, and come up with something reasonable. That's what the people are telling you they want. I'm not such a, a small person. I can't admit I made a mistake. I really find this uh, motion ironic because uh, the net effect of it will be to generate more work for council and clearly council or at least some members of council were not prepared for the action that was taken back in December when this uh, fee ordinance was, was passed. So uh, this great response, oh, we didn't know what we were doing. Well, uh, what makes anybody any more confident? You'll, you'll know what you're doing when you start uh, evaluating individual special events, uh, hardship applications. The other thing, while we had a lot of people out here uh, last meeting and this meeting, uh, Essentially, there were two events represented. Uh, so, where are all of the rest of them? So, as I said last week, if, if you if you want to if you want to legislate to uh, uh, play to a, uh, a crowd, uh, that's not a good way to run the business of the city. So, uh, I for one am opposed to. Uh, this uh, motion. Uh, Ms. Cheshire, call the roll, please. Mr. Samaya? Yes. Ms. Daly? Yes. Mayor Fitzgerald? No. Ms. Gross? No. Mr. Phelps? Yes. Vice Mayor Sattel? No. Mr. Weisgerber? Yes. Motion carries four to three. Mr. Weisgerber. So uh, I'm going to follow up as I had started the conversation around the uh, transient vendor, the special events policy, now I want to get to the fee ordinance. And hopefully when you get your closing remarks this time, you can add substance instead of just sound bites and attack.